All right, and today we are discussing High Fidelity, the 2020 Hulu television show starring the wonderful Zoe Kravitz, and I loved it. I did too. This week is going to be um, part one of two. We are going to be discussing episodes one through five, and mm -hmm. then next week we will go through episodes six through ten. Yeah. Speaking of the episode count, I thought the pacing was good. It was good. Like 10 episodes was, was appropriate. It didn't need happy. to be 15, you know? Yeah. I was happy. Most of them were 30 minutes. Oh, the yes. first episode was an hour. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, I hope this is not an hour. Each episode. <laughs> that's, that's a lot. That's a lot for me. We don't want to see an hour of this whining girl. No. If it's going to be an hour, give me more of Sharice. Okay. But we do have to mention that this 10 episode series is based on the movie High Fidelity that came out in the 1995, I believe, mm -hmm. which um, Zoe Kravitz's mom, Lisa Bonet, was in the movie. Yeah. And the movie was based on a, a book by Nick Hornby oh, okay. of the same name. And when I watched a, a interview with Zoe Kravitz, she said that the TV show is more in line with the book. But mm -hmm. I have to say, I just got done watching High Fidelity, the film last week. And honey, it just seemed like word for word. Like, it seems like everything is um, following close to the, the source material because... I mean, there were just straight lines that I remember from the film. All time, top five most memorable breakups. All time, top five most memorable heartbreaks in chronological What fucking ear guy? What fucking Lily girl? Well, the movie it stars a guy, but this stars the movie stars a white guy. This is starring um, a black woman, Zoe Kravitz, as Rob, and she is reflecting on a major breakup that was very important to her. And she works at a record store. Well, she owns a record store, and so music is a central theme throughout this show. So, to kick things off. What is your top five heartbreak playlist? Okay, my number one, Lauren Hill X Factor. Okay. That is like, I think that's the number one heartbroken song like you have to play. So I call it Teddy Pendergrass, but it's not him. It's the, it's the group that he was in. It's the song I Miss You. Oh. Um... What is the name of that group? Like, I miss you, miss you. Yeah. That one? Okay. And when he's like, oh, <laughs> I'll be like, oh my God. Oh God. Like between that and Lenny Williams, I mean, what are we doing here? Yes. Like, what are we doing? Just just the, the tears. Now, I had on my list some Destiny's Child. Destiny's Child's um, second al album, was it The Writings on the Wall? I think so, yeah. All them songs was like, you did me wrong, you cheated. But my little teenage self, when that album came out, I was like, yes, I was into all of it. <laughs> that song by Jackson 5, Can't Believe. Which one? That can't believe stayed away too long. Did I leave oh. your mom when I was gone? That's a good one. I want to be where you are. That's it. That's it. That one's How do you sad. feel about the heartbreak, heartbreak queens of the 90s, Tony Braxton and Mary oh J. Gosh. Blige? Listen, <laughs> Mary J. Blige just never feels like heartbreak. Are you playing? <laughs> yeah. Are you playing? Okay. So, well, she got some not going to cry. Yes. Like, so are you, are you playing Mary? Are you putting on Mary? When your heart is broken. No, I'm one of those I'm people not where I I'm love not to feel, I love her in pain. It's so bad. But I don't think about my own heartbreak when I, when I think about 
when I listen to Mary J. Blige, it's horrible. I just think, oh my gosh, girl, your voice is so great. And this is such a good song. I'd be like jamming to those songs as opposed to crying. <laughs> it's horrible. I was your lover and your secretary. I just be thinking about Angela Bassett. <laughs> exactly. I just be thinking about Angela Bassett setting fire to that car. Ooh, my, okay, but I do love, um, okay, so my favorite scene in boomerang is when Halle Berry was like love you don't know what love is oh. um and then that Tony Braxton love should have brought you home yeah yeah that's a good one that was a good one now um Tony Braxton's unbreak my heart is incredibly painful the video doesn't make me think about a breakup it just makes me think about a lost one but yeah that if I'm in the mood for crying, I'll turn that on. I'm gonna break my heart. And that kind of reminds me of like Celine Dion. Oh, and Lord. <laughs> I don't know. But to me, nothing, nothing beats Lauren. Lauren. I just I just feel Lauren when I when I listen to her. I will put on Madonna. That I've always been in love, oh, with, which love is just song. baby face. Like you can hear him in the background. So <laughs> that's why it makes me that song makes me feel happy, not even sad. That song makes, makes me feel so sad. Oh wow, I love that it. That is so sad. I don't I think that was five. I think I I gave you five. We have a lot. Well, so <laughs> episode episode one of the High Fidelity Hulu series starring Zoe Kravitz. Rob reflects on her breakup with Mac. Um, we established this was a major love. They were living together. Mm -hmm. was, were they? They, was li they, was living they were living together. together. And it appeared that he, he moved out. Mm -hmm. And there was later on in this, I can't remember if it was this episode or later episodes, where there was talk about um, marriage and a ring. Yes. And so we, we see that this was a very... Um, important relationship to mm -hmm. her and so the the episode it it keeps flashing back to the breakup but then she goes on a date she meets up with this guy Clyde at a restaurant for a date but she runs into her ex right before this date mm -hmm. and the story in any of the episodes is never told in chronological order. We're always no. like having these flashbacks, which for me made her an unreliable narrator or an unreliable protagonist. And so when she said, maybe there's something that I'm leaving out, I'm like, maybe there's something that you're always leaving out. Maybe there's something, maybe you're just framing all of this so that we, to, in order to position yourself as the victim here or as the one that we should feel sorry for or the one that we um should pity the most but well, it is her perspective it is her perspective the breaking the fourth wall thing with yes the, the audience so it's like we're we're in on on her version of the story it's her perspective but a lot of people know when they when they done did wrong now true a lot of Going people back, know Going back to what you said about how it's not in chronological order, I did like how at the end, to me, everything came together. So in the beginning, she's wearing this dirty t-shirt. Filthy. And in my mind, I'm like, why does this girl have on this dirty shirt? Like, is she dirty? Like, she doesn't, <laughs> seem, the most is. Put, she doesn't seem the most put together. She seems mm -hmm. very artsy. She owns a record store. She All she has is records. Mm -hmm. Even in the record store, it has a sign that says no CDs. So we get the feel that she is kind of like this New this age, artsy hippie. girl. Like, yeah. yeah, hippie girl. But she had this big stain on this shirt. And I'm like, why is she work, walking around in dirty clothes? Mm -hmm. But then later we found, oh no, she has a cut on her hand. Mm -hmm. And then it's not until the end of the episode where we find out why her shirt is dirty because when she ran into her ex, she kind of um, bumped into this guy on a bike and a drink was spilled on her shirt and then her hand was cut. And so it was just a horrible day for her. And you know what that made me think of? It made me think, because in the film, right, the, the man 
who's obsessing over his ex-partner, they end up back together. It's either like, will they or won't they? It's, yeah. you know, it's Kyle and Maxine, you know, are they going <laughs> to do this? Or are they not? It's Khadijah exactly. and Scooter. Is it going to happen? It's Pam, it's Pam and Tommy. Is If, if it's going to happen, when is it going to happen? Watching the film, I'm like, okay, that's one slot in the, it's going to happen. But you know how when people say when you meet your soulmate, you are at peace, you know, yeah. there's Hollywood, there's some conflicting information because Hollywood would be like, you get weak in the knees. Oh my gosh. You know, I'm like, what is like, if this is someone who she has been obsessing over, are we supposed to believe that he is a soulmate? You are in pain after you bump into him. You got hot coffee spilled on your chest. Yeah. You get a, a pretty severe cut on your hand you know, and you're bringing all of that to a date. Yeah. All of that traumatic mess to a first date, you know, it's like, what is going on? It's like, if, if, if you're supposed to be at peace, when you meet your soulmate, then is Mac your soulmate? Don't seem yeah, like it, it is Clyde the soulmate. Don't seem like it. No, it seems like with everything that happened, like this is just a big mess. I'm not fine. I'm not ready. This is fucked. Now, top five covers. Whitney Houston, I Will Always Love You. Just found out, I think this year or maybe last year, that that was a Dolly Parton song. Dolly Parton who? After Whitney did it? Like, that is a Whitney Houston song. Um, Even though I love me some Shaka Khan and I will listen to her version too. But... Whitney Houston, I'm Every Woman. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Whitney Houston can do a cover. Yes, and make it her own. <laughs> but I will listen to Shaka Khan. Please don't do it. I will listen to Shaka Khan. Okay, how do you feel about um, Beyonce before I let go? I think that it was an appropriate cover. Okay. I think that she definitely made it her own, but she did not try to one-up frankie beverly mm -hmm. so that's what i appreciate about it it just feels like a it feels like a completely different song it feels like you weren't trying to do too much and i appreciate that you know what you know what else i really i don't know if this is considered a, a cover but um when summer walker her song when she kind of like has that um say my name in it i'm not familiar with with that mm. I think it's the song called Body with Summer Walker. But she kind of has, um, she starts singing the Destiny Child Say My Name. But when she does it, it just sounds like you forget it's Destiny's Child. Like the words mm -hmm. are familiar, but it just, it's so Summer Walker that I appreciate that. Because sometimes now when I hear songs and I know it's, it's either a cover or they're taking some lyrics from an old song, all I can think of is the other song. I'm like, mm -mm. Stop, <laughs> stop doing Maya. No, <laughs> like turn it off. So it's very few times when I hear, especially now a new, a new artist do a song when they're referring back to the nineties or the two thousands where I'm like, okay, you, you did good. I mean, killing me softly. No. Yeah. That's not, I Hill. would say that's yeah, but that's it. Nah. Whitney Houston, I will always love you. Whitney Houston, Whitney Houston. <laughs> I'm every, every woman. woman. Killing me softly. Lauren Hill. The Fugees. Okay. That, yeah. Now that's it. Okay, we got a top three. I used to hate this song. Yeah. So Rob Charisse and Simon, they end up going to a club, a bar. This is where they meet Liam. Mm -hmm. um, he's singing a cover of a voice to men song, I'll Make Love to You. What? First okay. of all, they was hating on boys to men saying, I used to hate this song. I still hate this song, but I love this cover of it. And in the film, they was hating on Stevie Wonder, Stevie Wonder's oh, later work. And I was thing. like, what the fuck? Like, who are y'all to say? What? And don't you ever raise, don't you ever part your lips 
to speak ill of boys to men. Don't you ever in your life, don't you ever in your life, who wrote, who wrote this episode? Who wrote I don't it? Know. I got a problem. Don't you ever in your life out of every. So if you are going to have a film with, and I know that this is, I know that the show is taking after the book, but I feel like a lot of people will attach the show to the film. So if you already have a film that's speaking ill of Stevie Wonder, I would imagine that you would want to write that wrong. So if you're going to write that wrong, don't do it with another Black performer. Don't do that. Like, do you know how many bad songs there are out there? You had yeah. to pick someone Black in this very, because even though Rob is a Black woman, Rob is still a, Rob, Zoe Kravitz, I mean, Rob, I believe in the show, is positioned as a biracial woman. Rob has very light skin. We're still dealing, with, I mean, Sharice is the only person in the film who is darker than a can of chickpeas. There is, like, who, who, and, sh and we still don't get Sharice, I mean, does Sharice get her own episode? No, I mean, so I just feel like, that pulled me out of the show just a little bit. Like we're we're on episode two and already you're shitting on people who we consider legends. Don't do that. Yeah. Do you consider like Rob a childish person? Um, immature. And the podcast still processing kid on this a little bit. It seems like Rob doesn't know how to be in relationship with with people at all not just romantic dealings I just found it incredibly childish how whenever she wants to get out of something she will walk she will away leave. <laughs> like literally just leave like you know when she's on the date with Clyde and she's not enjoying herself she says I have to go to the bathroom and she sneaks out of the she sneaks out of the bar and starts walking home. The only reason she has to go back is because she forgot her phone. Um, she does the same with her brother um, mm -hmm. a few episodes later when he brings up. Um, We're going to get to that. Yeah. But I just feel like, wh why are we so childish now? Like, how old are we? We're business owners. Why are we, why are we so childish? And, you know, you're eating Fruity Pebbles. Yeah. I just think cereal is so child. Now I eat cereal all the time. I eat but cereal pebbles, all I can, the time. I can't even do that. I'm honey bunches of oats now. I mean, we need I, brand now. We need brand. I eat like these. I'm special K. <laughs> yes. We, we need, we don't do frosted flakes. We don't do Apple Jacks. I mean, you can and you should if you want to. But I'm just I, saying my that. My body won't let me. I just feel like if I see a grown person eating fruity pebbles. I am judging you. Um, and you should judge me when you see me eating Fruit Loops because I do eat Fruit Loops. But it feels just very, I feel like the show is doing that on purpose. Like you want to present her a bit as a, as a bit childish, you know? She even, I can't remember which episode this was, but it was a flashback to her relationship with Mac where he he made dinner for her she came mm -hmm. home and she, she he said you know all oh, the dinner is ready and she was like i have to go get cat food and he's like you're going right now she's like yeah i'll be right back and then she doesn't come right back like she gets the cat food but then she goes to a bar gets a couple of drinks and by the time she comes back home we can tell it's late because he's, he's in already bed. in bed. Yeah. So it's like she just skipped out on dinner, you know, that he made. And with no explanation, it's like she doesn't know how, she doesn't know how to be a grown up and mm -hmm. say how she feels. Yeah. I mean, so we got, you leave, you, you run away, literally run away from awkward situations. You're eating Fruity Pebbles. You, um, even in serious moments where, and I think this is in episode two where Mac says that he loves her and she says that she loves him too. That's couched in a game. Their do you, do you know game? Do mm -hmm. you, do you know that Albert 
um, Brooks's real name is Albert oh, Einstein, yeah. you know, like th for that yeah. to be inside of a game that they play, it just lends itself to this like childish characteristic that she's developing. And I feel like that's why, you know, you're, you have this question of why you always end up alone. Well, could mm -hmm. it be because you are so childish? Could be. In episode three, she has, she's having brunch with her brother and his pregnant wife. <laughs> and that's when um, they tell her that her ex is back in town. Now, Mac and her brother are friends. Mm-hmm. That's how they met. That's how they met. And then she's like, yeah, I know he's here. Um, I ran into him. And mm -hmm. then they're like, oh, okay. And then they mention that he has a girl. They mentioned he has a girlfriend, Lily. Later, I can't remember when they found out that. Um, they also tell her that they've been together for about a year and possibly engaged. Okay, so let's just dissect that a little bit because they don't tell her that she that he has a girlfriend. He says, we were just so whatever about that Lily girl. Oh yeah. And she runs off. What fucking Lily girl? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so she is just very upset. But even that, because while when his, when, the brother says that his wife is looking at him like, what the hell is wrong with you? Oh, yeah. We weren't supposed to say that. Which further lets me know that they have to handle her with kid gloves, right? Mm -hmm. Because yeah. they know that she's going to react poorly. And they so knew he, she was going to run away. They knew it. The wife was like, oh, she's gone. <laughs> she is gone. She didn't bounce, okay? Ain't paid for this Keisha nothing. So he visits her at her record store in order to check up on her. And whenever he's giving her information about Lily and about Lily's relationship with Mac, it comes out in tense spurts because he doesn't want to offer that information because he knows that she did, she is not handling this breakup well, you know? Yeah. It's, I mean, they've been together for a year. Oh, well, I mean, it's not serious. Uh, I heard he got a ring. You didn't, you know he's engaged. Mm-hmm. You know, at the brunch, you could have sat her down and said, yeah, we know that he's back in town. We also know that he's with a woman and it's pretty serious. Her name is Lily. They're engaged. You know, when we told you, you know, we were going to Colorado, we actually went to London because we were at their engagement party. <laughs> that didn't happen in the show. But I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, there was a quick little Zoom call. No, but they knew that she she was not she's not mature enough for a mature conversation. Yes. Yes. So, or she's just not I think it's a maturity issue. I don't think that yeah. she's emotionally unstable or anything like that, but I just I think that they're afraid of how she's going to handle it. Yes. And then her brother's in an awkward position because that's still his friend. And so <laughs> what do you do? Your friend used to date your sister, and now your friend has moved on, and you have to, and you have to tell your sister all the details of her ex. One thing that I liked about the the show in the film, and again, I know the show is based on the book. I know, but just listen, y'all. So in the film, Rob White Wob white man rob owns a record store and his mother seems to be way more proud of his sister who seems to be just like really killing it in corporate america i never really caught on to what it is that they do but you know she has a really good stable position in white collar america and she was positioned as the successful one and if we are like kind of flipping roles here, Rob, a black woman who has a brother. And if, you know, if we are to position him as the more successful one, I appreciate that that success is kind of centered around parenthood, you know, yeah. like he's successful because he is married and he has a kid, not because he's some 
you know, cutthroat stockbroker who makes a lot of money. No, because he is starting a family. So I appreciated that. It was just and different also, to see. It also shows the difference between um, relationships. Her brother is in a stable relationship. Mm -hmm. And Rob is trying to figure out why she has no relationship. Mm -hmm. And so I do like how they're kind of juxtaposed against each other. But um, finding out that your ex is now engaged to a girl named Lily <laughs> is, that is heartbreaking. Okay, so Rob, she's she's contemplating about why she has no man, why she has all these exes or so a woman she because she she will, true. you know, dip dip a toe in so the lady she, pond. She is, um, I guess, reminiscing about her top five heartbreaks. So we have the childhood. Um, first boyfriend mm -hmm. which she literally no. goes to her yearbook Kevin Bannister his home phone number calls his mother and is like can I speak to your son do you 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 ain't gotta do the books for the for the shop you don't have to do any planning you ain't gotta do no marketing the fact that the home number is still or that they still have a landline because if you call whatever number I looked at my yearbook from whatever grade, it ain't going nowhere. I don't even remember leaving a phone number in my yearbook. No, oh, you mean like when you sign it? Time. When you yeah. oh yeah 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 like oh yeah, call I, me, yeah. Have fun. oh you girl girl. But if you call that number, you're not getting you're not getting you getting doo -doo -doo -doo. the number you have. <laughs> that is what you getting. But anyways, so she finds out that. I guess she tells this boy's mom that she's his first girlfriend. And the mom is like, no, my son married his first and only girlfriend. Mm -hmm. So now she looks dumb. <laughs> but that was heartbreak. That was one of the heartbreaks. The other Did heartbreak. Did you think the mother so was called, being rude? Yeah. But then it's like, if someone is calling me. Yeah. Like, why are you calling me? Yeah. Talking. Why? Like, why are we on the phone? why my son is married yeah probably for a long time saying that this was his one and only girlfriend so i'm assuming high school sweethearts they've been married <laughs> why are you on my phone so rob goes on this adventure of finding all of her exes or her top five heartbreaks mm -hmm. so then we have the other heartbreak this guy she meets um she meets up with him in the bar and apparently his life is just no good he's he has a kid mm -hmm. doesn't say if he's married but there is a a girl a girlfriend or a baby mother involved mm -hmm. and it's just not working out he's like i don't know that they don't like me i don't know what's going on things have really went downhill and rob is like yeah, probably shouldn't have tried to dig him up out, out the ground. Mm -hmm. So and then, he he reminds her that she broke up with him. She broke up with him, yeah. So then mm -hmm. she's like, oh. So it's like this heartbreak really isn't a real heartbreak because yeah. she's the one who broke the heart. So then we go on to um, the girl, her ex-girlfriend, who is now this weird influencer. She has this influencer party that's what it seemed like a meetup where mm -hmm. nobody knew each other but they were just all taking selfies and you can tell that's not rob's thing yeah that she is didn't even not know what her the, scene what the check mark meant on instagram like she yeah. influencer instagram is just she don't know that miss cat monroe is instagram famous yeah she don't know what that means and so she's in this space and realized she's, she looks awkward. She has her in this crazy black bubble coat. Just doesn't even, she looks weird. Just mm -hmm. looks awkward. <laughs> and you can tell she just doesn't, she doesn't fit in. So it's like, why are we going back to this ex? Mm -hmm. And then you have, what's his name, Simon? Yes. Simon, so her and Simon, the guy who works at the store with her, 
they went out, but then it turns out Simon is gay. That's, you know what, that would kind of, I don't know if that would, that one might, might mess with me too. Well, she finds that out while they're dating. So she goes yeah. to do, she's, she's on her way to do her laundry and she sees him inside of the laundromat that she, that I'm assuming she's about to go inside of getting the number of some, you know, handsome young man. And my thing is, I'm assuming that this is a laundromat that both of y'all go to. Why are you picking up men if, if I could just come any day? Most people do their laundry on certain days, Yep. you know? So you knew I was going to be here this Saturday night. You knew that. You knew that. And you picking up, okay, okay, Simon. Yeah, he was fouled for that. But this episode, episode four, this is when I thought Rob is just crazy. Because crazy. there is nothing in the world that's going to make me dig up anybody I used to date. Like, she, you can tell she's off. Because going back to the guy, she went to her yearbook. She didn't go to Facebook instagram that's where you check up on your middle school friends like <laughs> let me type this person into facebook to see what they're doing he don't call his house especially if you know their names because there are some people i can see like i do need a yearbook for that because i only remember their first name and whose class they were in i don't remember their last name and they could be married changed you know but you know his last you know his first and his last name you could have typed that in somewhere yeah exactly well what do you think she wants well she says she wants to find out why she called it why she's so um what word did she use? Rejectable. Or rejectable. Well, she's like rejectable. But what do you think she really wants? That's what she says she wants. What does she really want? To know why she's rejectable. <laughs> no, but Simon did make a good point though. Mm -hmm. Because um, cause she was like, oh, well, you rejected me. And he was like, well, what? I'm gay. But I didn't reject you. Everything I did when we were together, I do now. Like, I, we're still friends. We still... I still talk to you. I still, at least I still like rub your back or whatever. Like I'm, I'm here. Like I didn't reject you. And so I think she's just trying to figure out, she needs to figure out like what type of relationship she wants. I feel like whatever happened between her and Mac, she feels like it's her fault. Well, yeah, because, because going back to when he cooked dinner and she just, ran away yeah and so I feel like she wants confirmation that she's not a bad person not necessarily like what is it about me that makes you reject me I feel like she wants to know that that she isn't as bad as she thinks she is because there isn't, it, like, she never, she never allows herself to celebrate or even investigate the, the positive things or the, or the things that are just matter of fact. So when, um, so when Justin Kidd says, you broke up with me, mm -hmm. she doesn't sit in that conversation with him and talk about their past relationship. She doesn't do that at all. She's like, oh, okay, well, I'm going to check that off my list. I wasn't oh, yeah. the bad guy here. You know, like, with yeah, my fault. Yeah, Next. with Simon. Oh, we're still in a relationship? Oh, okay. Not we're still in a relationship. Is there anything that I could do to make our relationship stronger? Because you are my friend and because we work together, we have multiple strings that are attaching us. She doesn't do that with, um, with Kevin Bannister. Oh, he's married. Oh, okay, so clearly that was fate. That's, it's not my fault. Nothing is, nothing is my fault because when Kat is giving her the business, like you seem like you was always in search of yourself. Is that it? You could also be a bit obsessive, like, um, a little too in touch with your feelings. Okay. I thought this is, it, is this, did you say, did you say you wanted information about why your relationships never last, but Kat is giving you her honest opinion about what is going on. And instead, when you repeat that information back to your friends, you rationalize it away by saying, 
I shouldn't want to be liked by her, right? So she, it just feels like you are yeah. not really interested in learning about yourself. You just want someone to quickly tell you, no, you're lovable. Stop that. Stop that. It just feels like think, very attention seeking to me. But do I get what you're saying? But do you think most people do that? Like if when they, because usually when people break up, it's never their fault. It's always the other person's fault. I think that even if it, whether it's a romantic situation or whether it's a, a friendship situation, you know, when you have done someone wrong, just by the, the rules that this world has set up, you know, I think that, you know, when you have done something wrong. And so sometimes we only judge ourselves by our last failure. So mm -hmm. whatever happened between her and Mac, she's taking that into every single relationship that she's been in and thinking I was the bad guy there too. Would you want to know what an ex really thinks about you or why the relationship didn't work out? The only way I would want to know if it was a relationship like Simon, if this person was still in my life. Oh, still your friend. But like Justin, um, Kevin Bannister and Justin Kitt and Kat Monroe. Oh, they can all go. You don't yeah. know these people. You don't, you don't know these people. Mac, maybe. Yeah. It seems like one, I'm still in love with you. So of course I'm going to, I want to know what you think, but Simon, I'm not in love with you, but you are my friend and I love you. Right. And so, so I might have that conversation. I might want to know, like, based on my friend's opinion, like, can you get me together real quick? It just makes sense with Simon. These other people, girl. Yeah. Because, because then also, I do believe we are, we're different people depending on the age and where you are in life. Like, in college is different. You should be different than. Mm -hmm out of college, like from a teenager to twenties to thirties, hopefully you're not the same. You're not making the same mistakes or all of your exes don't have the same critique about you. Cause then that just yeah. means you're just not even like, growing up. No evolution. None. <laughs> so, okay. So episode five starts with, she gets a call. She's at the record store. She gets a call saying that, um, there's somebody who wants to sell their record collection and they have a pretty, you know, good record collection that she can probably use or be useful at her store. So she's really interested in buying it, but she's going to need somebody with a car to transport all of these records. So her awkward self calls <laughs> this one night stand. Now it's a one night stand basically from episode one, because he has a car, this kudos to her, because I don't know anyone. I mean, I know you could have Ubered. I know you could have Ubered. I know you could have rented a car. So she calls Clyde, has this super awkward conversation about, yeah, remember I'm the girl that you slept with, like, you know, <laughs> whenever ago. And he's like, uh, okay, yeah, I remember you. It seems, it seems like Clyde likes her. Oh, he is infatuated. But I guess she just, she doesn't know how to, what she's doing, how to date. So, but anyway, so Clyde actually comes through. He, mm -hmm. you know, he picks her up and then that's when we find out that he didn't just leave her, that his, his car was towed and... No, we find out later that yeah, we find that out episode one back, at the he comes at the very back end. to get his phone mm -hmm. because and he tells her, you know, my car was towed. I had to go go get my car, and then I left my phone. I had to go to work. I don't have your number memorized. Your number's mm -hmm. in my phone. My phone's at your house, which I don't know why she didn't see that because you know why she didn't see that boy phone. She if got someone, records everywhere. She got fruity pebble boxes, milk cartons. You so know why you, she didn't see that phone? You can initially think that, okay, damn, he ghosted me. But then if you notice, okay, his phone is still at my apartment. You obviously must it must, it must have been some, some type of emergency or something. When Simon and Sharice come over in order to get her out of the house in episode two, Sharice says, you need a maid. <laughs> and she do. So she, I can, I, that makes sense. Her not seeing 
the phone. So anyway, we find out that Clyde did not ghost her. Mm-hmm. No, he, he just, he had a bad day that day too. They both was having a bad day on that first date. So anyway, back to episode five. Um, Rob and Clyde, they go to this rich woman's house and we find out that she is selling her ex-husband's prized record collection because he is a cheater and this is a massive collection her ex-husband is really into music the beatles yesterday and today with the bloody baby cover these are unicorn records the ex-wife wants twenty dollars twenty nothing more <laughs> nothing less the ex-wife is a little eccentric too because she has all these art pieces one made of pills prescription pills <laughs> that reminds her of her mom or something mm-hmm. her mother's greatest love mm-hmm. was that prescription pills and so then she has good. like this stuffed sculpture made out of like what stuffed animals that she says she could never have because she was allergic <laughs> you allergic her mom had to vacuum the windows this lady she is she's a trip but anyway, she's selling this, her husband's records for $20. And Rob is conflicted because she was like, this, I'll, I'll give you 500. She's like, no, 20. I'll, you know, a hundred something. She's like, honey, $20. What you'll find in their place is a framed, perfectly crisp $20 bill. I already bought the frame. So Rob was like, I can't just buy this man stuff for $20. And so the the wife slips and says that her husband's pop is at this bar with this, you know, 20-year-old girl. And so um, Clyde has this idea. He's like, just let's go down to see if, if he's an asshole or not. Mm-hmm. So they go, figure out who he is, strike up a conversation and he is an asshole yeah like he's only talking to clyde he is pretending as if rob isn't there and when she does speak her opinion just does not matter you've got yourself quite a little firecracker there don't you know it's all cute now but uh it gets old fast trust me but rob's an asshole too (laughs) true but and the girl that he's with she's just like she doesn't matter but she still doesn't buy the collection mm-hmm. from from the um the soon to be ex wife, which I'm not I'm not sure why because once well I think Clyde explains it to her like he says you you understand that if I that take true. these records from him, when are they coming from my records? Because she knows yeah. that she messed up the same way that ex-husband ruined the relationship. She know that she more than oh, likely ruined the relationship. It. And I don't think that this is clear to Rob, but the way that this, this is what I'm talking about. And like, this is not just like this ex-husband, um, is problematic inside of his romantic relationship but also just in the way he interacts with the world and rob is the same way when it's not about rob rob exits the conversation when sharice comes in and she's dancing to come on eileen because she doesn't want to hear it she's like turn that shit off you know and when um when Sharice and Simon get into that argument about Lauren Hill and, and Lauren Hill's cover of you're just too good to be true. And is that a good cover? And Lauren Hill is late to her concerts. As soon as they get into an argument about that, Oh God, I'm, I'm, I'm leaving. I'm out of here. She leaves, you know, when they're it, when they have that conversation about whether or not they should sell that off the wall, Michael Jackson album, she runs away from that. You know why? Because it has nothing to do with her. Yeah. When, and also, I feel like these, the breaking of the fourth wall, this cutting away to the audience, how is that any different from what that ex husband was doing in that bar? Like just completely ignoring the other person in this scenario. I feel like even though we are supposed to suspend logic and know that the other person on the other end knows 
that like they they don't know that she's talking to the audience they don't know that we like we we've been watching tv long enough to know that we're supposed to suspend our logic and know that but i do think that when she is talking to the audience that is her slipping out of the conversation that she is having with that other person in her head like i'm just not about to listen to you child i'm about to i'm about to you know focus on these thoughts that i'm having about mac or about you know or about anything about lily about rosés <laughs> about or frosés or Rose. whatever about you know i'm not about to I, i'm not going to be invested in this conversation with you whether the conversation is serious or not yeah okay top five albums or songs lauren hill um the miseducation of lauren hill oh, i still listen to yeah. that i still listen to that yes Beyonce Lemonade. Ah, oh, not my favorite. What? It's not your favorite Beyonce album? No, I really like the visual album. Um, with Lemonade, I like the songs better than the visuals. I did not get the visuals, but when I heard the songs by themselves, I was like, okay, I get, I get it we will after so we're gonna do high fidelity episode six through ten and then we're doing eve's by you then we are doing beyonce lemonade because how dare oh my gosh <laughs> no any more of your top five i don't know if i yes. have top five favorite albums but i know i put songs because i do have some songs that never get old to me um, i i i mean i have an album um oh songs in the key of life that is just like non-stop we we did not um stay true to the top five rob would not be happy with us at all because <laughs> we stopped at like two i know and we don't have a push in. what other movies need to be flipped or remade starring a black woman Gone with the Wind from the perspective <laughs> of Mammy, played by the wonderful Hattie McDaniel. Oh my gosh. I wasn't ready. One of my favorite movies, um, indie films is 500 Days of Summer. Mm. And I would love to Someone see else that. obsessing about. <laughs> yeah, about a, a lost relationship. But I would love to see that from a Black woman's point of view. Okay. I would love to see Psycho from a Black woman's point of view or just a Black point of view. Like, I don't know if the character who is stabbed in the shower, I I don't want that to be a Black woman. (laughs) So just Black folks in it. Don't kill no Black woman in no shower. That's, so that's my, that's my fourth one. I would love to see, like, one of those teen cult films. What am I thinking of? Mean Girls or 10 Things I Hate About You. Like, those types of movies. Mm -hmm. Just Black. Like, was there a a Black teen movie? Uh, Them House Party. And B2K movies. Oh, nah. Without dancing. (laughs) Like, um, I know we were good for dancing, but is there just... (laughs) Yeah, you're right. We do need a... We're not not all just dancing in, doing a a choreography in. I would love to see, like, you know, one of those classic teen movies. Oh, you know, my favorite teen movie, Clueless. Yes. That would be a really good one. Yes. Yeah. And definitely seeing like a like you know a posh black black girl from the suburbs, like you know, that type of thing. Cause even with house party, it, it was still, you know, you had they were still, you know, um would definitely play lived in the hood and oh yeah. They had to go pick up Shireen and yeah, you know. Somebody was making Kool-Aid with a exactly with a arm no. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That would be great. 
I want um scary movie that centers Brenda. Oh yes. That would be cool. You know, I, I mentioned this, but I definitely did not think of five. Oh, I have five in this one. So it's Gone with the Wind, uh-huh. Psycho, Scary Movie. And I would like to see like a Malcolm X or a Selma from the from the point of a view. A white point of view? No, from like the point of view of the wives. Oh, I would like to okay. see that. Um and also, I would like to see Get Out from the point of view of, of, a, of a Black woman. Like, how would it yeah, be well, if a Black woman... Long. First of all, I'm not finna... <laughs> they finna have me go to your <laughs> The Black woman... As soon as a Black woman saw a picture of the staff mm-hmm. and every all the... It was just Black staff, she would have been like, nah, 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 nah. So it would have been a... It would have been a short that film. would have been a short movie. He would have had to trick her into going. Like, yes. hey, girl, we going to Six Flags. Would have had to like, that ain't her the exit. That is not the exit. You have now come to the end of the episode. Thank you for listening. Let us know what you think. Hit us up on Instagram at Curry Gumbo. Bye. Bye, y'all. Smooches.